Morning, everybody. So, uh, every now and then I get questions from guys like, uh, when do you decide to use your vinyl for a mask? Uh, when do you decide to use tracing? When do you decide to uh, do something completely freehand and uh, just using a Stabilo? Well, in this particular case, I am just, just going uh, completely freehand with the Stabilo. And this particular subject here is based off of some Russian folklore. Uh, Fendir is uh, apparently uh, this guy who somehow gets possessed uh, by a demon and is told to eat his family. <laughs> Hell of a meal. It was probably a buffet for about two weeks. But uh, anyways, this particular image that I'm working on is loosely based upon what is given here. Now, when a customer says, hey, Mike, I want you to put your own spin on it. That's when I usually will take the opportunity to just simply do something freehand. Um, the uh, pinhead, the reason I spent all that time doing the mask system on that particular one was because of a couple of reasons. One, pretty popular image. Uh, chances are that that particular job will uh, reciprocate more work doing a very similar uh, take on that image. Secondly, there was some geography and some certain items in that particular image like the pins that really required to have some tight edges and so I felt more compelled to do that with the mask just because of that. Now I could have taken the time and done every single one by hand. Uh, a brush would have been a decent alternative. Uh, that particular image had a nice blend of very rigid imagery and components mixed with very soft rendering uh, of the skin tones and the lighter values. So that was the reason that we went with uh, that one to go and do it with a mask. We did that on the computer and then I cut out a vinyl mask. This one, being the nature that it is, is going to be done completely freehand. And uh, we'll do a few pictures of it along the way, but for now, I'm just kind of coming in here and I'm adding components and stuff like that to coordinate uh, with this particular painting. Uh, and I'm not really looking at the image as much for inspiration anymore. Um, I've gotten basically the gist of what's going on there with this old man playing, it looks like a lyre or some classical string instrument made out of bones. And it would be hands here, up here, fingers dripping over. And it's made from the wrist, elbow, and the shoulder. So that's what's going to be happening with this particular one. And it looks like a uh, rather than having this cauldron of uh, relatives spilled out uh, over here, I'm going to actually keep mine upright and have uh, items boiling inside of it with flames coming up from underneath it and then I'll have like uh, you know maybe some rib cages and different elements of skeleton structure and stuff hanging out around the bones almost as if the fire is being <clears throat> uh, created from the bones of the previous victims or family members could have been a you know bad Christmas one particular year and uh, might have had a few of these guys for dinner so that's my objective, that's my goal, and that's the reason why I'm doing it. I figured you guys might enjoy a little bit of the insight as to why I do things a certain way, and sometimes I'll do them differently. So what, um, how close will you stick to your sketch as you actually start painting? Um, you know, I'll stay pretty close to it. I will n not necessarily make any um, premeditated moves as far as the values and stuff like that. I have a pretty good idea, though, as I drew it out, how I was going to make it all work. Um, this will have contrast lighting over here. There'll be like some skulls mounted on the wall, some candles and stuff like that. So the elements are going to be, you know, pretty close to what I have here. I mean, this is just loosely guided with a pencil, but... Um, their actual rendering itself is going to develop as it goes with some with some ideas of what I want, but no real dedication uh, to having a resolved image in my mind. And how, what's the process of you going uh, to figure out how you're going to interpret 
what you see. So you're given, you're given um, a painting, and you're told to interpret it your own way. What's how do, you, how do you go about doing that? Well, I think for myself, what's important here is to capture the story. I think that the story is the most important. I think that the main character uh, could be much like that of Santa Claus. I mean, not knowing a whole lot about this particular Russian folklore, I think that um, I'm going to keep this to a certain amount of uh, identification relative to this. I think that they're going to be resemblant, but not necessarily identical. I think I'm going to allow myself to uh, have my own creative liberties within the definition of this character, uh, as well as taking some cues off of the one in the original drawing. Um, I think that, uh, you know, when somebody says, take your spin on it, I initially would like to just digest this photograph, uh, absorb it into my system creatively, and then I'll probably turn this off completely and then at that point in time uh, I will be more influenced about my own ideas rather than feeling dependent upon uh, the reference photo. So hope that helps. Any more questions from the gallery? No. Okay. All right. Good day.